Even though I've dropped the ball on adding comments to the start of videos as of late, yes, Chris, yes, you will make it into the video. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Project Tranmere, and I feel like I start off episodes like this all the time, but yet again, it is true. Today is a very big day for the team. It is December 4th, and the rebound has gone quite well. We find ourselves in 6th in the league table after, again, barely escaping relegation. To be back in the top half of the table here in our third season is a very big deal. But we can't just focus on the here and now. We also have to focus on the future, which brought us to the question of what to do with certain members of the team. So I went through everything. We're going to go over what this team is going to look like moving forward, and hopefully it doesn't have too many negative effects. But if we look at what happened, of course, in Season 1, the February number collapse. Season 2, we were dreadful up until the final stretch. But now here, things are looking good, and we need to stay on that right path of playing players in a natural position. For the most part, Duarte is not actually where he's supposed to be, but that's okay, because things are working out for us. Now, we have had a little bit of bad luck due to injury, which brings me to the current goalkeeping situation. Reynaldo Grinero is obviously the guy for us. An 88 overall at 20 years old, he is going to be fully fit in two days, which means Nemanja Dragasevic is going to be put on the transfer list. Of course, we loaned him out to Fulham at the beginning of the season, but because we've brought on so many new young players and we have to get rid of people, it makes sense that Dragasevic will be on the way out, hopefully by the end of January. Of course, Grinero is going nowhere. Unfortunately, Vasco Morales, even though he's new, is immediately going onto the transfer list. Reese Harris is listed as exciting, which is, of course, the second best status that a player can have. We're going to hold on to him for now until we get somebody better, but I am going to put him onto the loan list. And Walter Meyer, of course, is going nowhere. He hasn't had the best season to date, but he is going to be our second choice keeper moving forward for obvious reasons. I would love to keep Dragasevich as the second choice, but again, we have to get rid of some people. The only move, the only alternative move here, I would say, would be to loan out Meyer, or, you know, more than likely loan out Meyer and have Dragasevich be the second choice keeper, but more than likely Dragasevich would just force his way out of the club anyway, and that plan wouldn't exactly last long term. Besides, I feel like a 79 overall goalkeeper can get the job done, or at least I would like to think so. So again, Myers staying, Harris to the loan list, Morales and Dragasevich will hopefully be sold sometime soon. As far as the right backs are concerned, of course I had to recall some people, but this is the current situation. Liam O'Leary is obviously our number one, there's no doubt about that. Bjarn Johansson is obviously our second best choice, but from there... It gets to be a little bit interesting, and I'm not entirely sure because I don't know what Roldan's status is, and that kind of sucks, but without knowing what that is, it comes down to either Roldan or Thomas Lund, and Lund's only showing great potential, so I'm not too intrigued at keeping him at this point. Simon Kovac is on the way out, no matter what. Of course, Kovac and Lund were on loan, but between Roldan in between Thomas Lund, one of those two will be leaving. It depends on what Roldan's status is, and I won't be able to see that until that offer from Huddersfield goes away. So at the very least, Simon Kovac will be on the way out. Right back is fairly straightforward, as is the center back position for that fact. Zouabri, an exciting prospect, is absolutely staying, although I am going to look to try and loan him out. Harrison Wright as well. Not a long-term option for us, but for now, he needs to stay. He is a necessity. Leandro Diaz, unfortunately, is not. There are just too many players above him on the depth chart right now. We're going to look to move on from him to free up a roster spot. Eugenio Galliano going absolutely nowhere. Archie Bailey is one of our two more featured center backs at the moment. In terms of who we're going to be focusing on, it's Bailey and it's Williams that you see just listed below Bailey that are both listed as having the potential to be special. They are going to be the ones that we focus upon no matter what. So I think Williams ideally is going to stay. I'm going to try to loan out Zouabri with him having exciting 
and try to train up Williams while he's here rather than loaning him out. The sooner we get Anthony Williams ready to go for the Premier League, the better. So again, Zouabri is staying, but he's going to be loan listed. Wright stays for now. Diaz is going to be sold. Galliano is staying. Archie Bailey also staying, but of course he is out for a month with an MCL injury. Williams is staying, and he's going to be a main focused upon player when it comes to training. Torben Weber, again, also not a great option right now, but he is going to be a second choice center back. That is the situation there. Left back, pretty straightforward. Conrad Medved is the guy. He's going nowhere. Ed Richardson is the second choice option. And Cristobal Villalaba is the third option. We're going to look to keep him and try to loan him back out. Had to recall him at the very least to see what he had to offer. We move to CDM. And when it comes to Ishmael Diaby, he is going to be a second choice CDM for us. We're actually not going to be looking to loan him back out course listed as an exciting prospect as is Placido Cano these two will be getting you know time on the second team if we can continue to perform somewhat in tournaments of course we've already been bounced from at least one that I recall but Diaby and Cano both decent options for us Miranda as well potential to be special I think I am going to try to loan him out though and up until that point we're going to put a little bit of training into him as well but we'll try to loan out Geronimo Miranda. Cordoba, of course, right now is a first-team option next to Timo Altonen. But that does leave Sean Bailey on the outside looking in. And unfortunately, we are going to try and sell him. There are players above him on the depth chart, and that's just the way the cookie crumbles. As far as the right mid, right wing situation, we technically only have three players. Young Bauer, Kiesta, and Ponce. That is it. So my goal here is to try and loan these guys out. Quite a bit of training will more than likely go towards Young Bauer as well to develop him, but I am going to try to loan out every single winger that we have on the team right now because the right side just isn't where we need it to be to match a very strong left-hand side that we'll get to in a moment. So we're going to be sticking with the formation that we have right now, which obviously is more center, you know, Central defensive mid focused, essentially. So, again, Altonen is good, but moving over to the right mids, we try to loan out Young Bauer and Kiesta. Center mid wise, we do have Prado. Unfortunately, I'm not sure how good he is just yet. All it says is at the club, so he gets to stay for now. We are going to add him to the loan list. Depending on what that changes to, though, he may be gone in the somewhat near future. Bello. Uh, you know, again, same thing. He's scheduled to go out on loan. I don't know exactly how good he is, so for now, he gets to stay. There's nothing I can do until January. We do get to Idris Kude, though. An exciting prospect, but he's a 60, he's 16 years old. And again, unfortunately, not bad, but there are players well ahead of him in terms of development. And if I'm going to develop somebody, you know, 16 years old, 60 overall, they need to have that special trait. So Idris Kude will be on the way out. Left mid, we start off with one of the three dominant, potentially dominant players in the future, Konstantin Zahner, who, again, is going to be loaned out, I hope. I hope, at the very least. I'm actually not sure what offers he has available. Didn't want to block offers. I'm going to allow offers. What offers does he have available? That's really weird, considering I just called him back. That is very... Okay, I guess it was a failed loan move. Regardless, going to try and loan out Zahner. Ovi Anderson's the interesting one, because as you'll see here, and you know what, here we'll go all the way down to the bottom here to further explain this. Alongside Zahner, we also have Mateo Villalaba and Albilo Fuentes. I think, unfortunately, by the time that right-hand side has developed, Anderson will probably force his way out of the club anyway, He's a longtime member of this team, but I think it's for the best, much like with Dragasevic, we look to move on from Ovi Anderson, which is a little bit of a risk, but like I said, he's just going to be wasted. He's just going to be a bench player for now, and I think he, he's already attempted to force his way out of the club. I think we get rid of him now and focus on building up that right-hand side while the other members of the left-hand side continue to develop as well. So Ovi Anderson has been put on the transfer list. Moving to the attacking midfielder options, we start off with Romero, who has the exciting tag. 
He is a second team option. He will be staying. DeGroot as well is a third team option with potential to be special. We'll probably put some training into him as well. We're going to add him to the loan list. Hopefully he'll get some playing time elsewhere. Miranda, we don't yet know. Of course, he's scheduled to go out on loan, so he will stay for now. Berezovsky will continue to stay on the team. He's going to be a second choice option with Romero. Arne is not going anywhere, nor is Jay Morgan. That pretty much stays the same. We move to the attacking options and we start off with Luna, listed as an exciting prospect. Going to try to loan him out for now because we have three strikers that we don't yet have information on. So odds are he'll end up leaving. Depends on what happens. Jan Montendon listed as exciting, but he's an 86. Obviously, he's not going anywhere. Moritz Meyer is not going anywhere for the moment, although he is going to be a second choice option moving forward. Ivan Duarte is our focused upon striker. Yeah, I think he's the guy. Montendon's going to be great. I think Duarte hopefully will hit that potential to be a very special player. Breen, I cannot currently recall because we have a full roster. I've recalled too many players. Ponce again is here, listed as an exciting prospect. We're going to try to loan him out. And then we get to the other strikers. DeGroff, I can't see the information for. Jonathan Kelly is going to be staying as a result until we get information on our other strikers. And Tabucci, I can't find out information about. So with all these left mids, again, same thing. We're going to be trying to loan them out that being Guzman, although, did it not tell me? Yeah, with Guzman it says at the club, so unfortunately I don't know how good he is yet, but there's a chance he'll be gone. Fuentes, of course, is one of those focused upon left wingers, as is Villalaba. And Horatio Sanchez, again, same thing as Anderson. Not a bad player at this point, but I have more confidence in the youngsters that we have, especially someone like Villalaba. We are going to try to sell Horatio Sanchez. Maybe PSG will be back for him that is what is going to be going on with the roster as we approach the January transfer window. A lot going down. Again, a lot of information that we do not yet know. But it is fairly obvious with the amount of talent that we have in the Youth Academy that we need to, of course, move some people out. So we should have information on Roldan. And there is also a loan offer for Prado nearly immediately so we'll see what happens with him and let's see if I can find out what the trait is I guess for lack of a better term for Roldan still approached by San Lorenzo so we're not yet going to know that is okay I believe we have scouting reports coming back on the 5th which is why I want to stay live with this as Roldan does not end up going out on loan Anthony Martial November player of the month or did our loan? I don't know. Maybe those moves already came through. We are playing Arsenal today. And I think... Ah, boy. You know, here, let's look at the schedule ahead. Let's look at the schedule ahead. I want to make progress today. I want to get very close to the end of the season, if not there. We play Arsenal, Nottingham Forest, Spurs, West Ham, and Man City this month. I will update you guys. And the next time there's something to talk about, let's hope we can get off to a good start here, though, in terms of winning games. So we're not yet done with the month of December, but this turn of events is worthy of rejoining you know, what we're doing here just a tad bit earlier. We started off the month against Arsenal. We beat them 1-0. We then go and play Nottingham Forest. We beat them 3-0. We then go on to play Spurs. We drew. We then play West Ham. We win 3-1. Tranmere Rovers are currently second in the league table through 18 games played, beating Man City and Spurs on goal differential, which is insane when you think about it. 30 goals for 16 against Everton, currently top of the league table with five more goals scored than we have. The goal for this season that we really need to hit is to finish top five to make it into uh, the Europa League, or at least a preferred spot, right? So it's it's tough. There's a lot of pressure on us this season, but we are getting the job done as it stands. Uh, we have tried to sell Leandro Diaz. That did not happen. We did sell that extra goalkeeper, not named Dragasevich. However, so needless to say... Things have gone quite well, and this game coming up against Man City is a big deal as Ruben Kiesta 
wants out of the Youth Academy, and we are going to be more ruthless than ever when it comes to potentially signing players. And Kiesta's a 54 at 18 years old. That's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. Is there anybody else? Obviously, someone like Justin Haber is safe. There's no doubt about that. Someone like Cameron is a little bit closer to being safe. I imagine Vera is going to drop. Is there anybody else who's more of a guaranteed cut? Not at the moment. So, for now, the Youth Academy is looking fine. I am nervous for this game against Man City. Before we head into January, this is a big, big deal to potentially pick up a point here. And we have to stop that. No, we don't. Thank God. It's Sean Bailey, not Archie Bailey. And we were planning on selling Sean Bailey anyway. So if that, I mean, you know, if that's not a sign that things are going our way, I don't know what is. Thankfully, it's going to be $13.6 million, which again... The money doesn't really matter to us with us not using the Youth Academy, or with us not well, with us only using the Youth Academy, not using the transfer list, or the transfer budget at the very least. So Bailey is gone, or at least is going to be, hopefully. And there's also a transfer offer for Kude, which will hopefully go through. So I'm willing to accept that, no questions asked. So we are, we are looking, we've already moved one player away. We are looking to free up a couple of spots on the roster. As these have been the five that we've been focusing on, Young Bauer and Williams end up going up an overall point. And you'll see with Young Bauer, with De Groot and with Duarte, trying to make sure I focus on stamina as well to really build that up. We play Man City here, then we play Watford. I imagine that's in the FA Cup to start January. It is. That's going to be a very big game for the likes of Walter Meyer. If we crash out of that tournament, how much playing time they get for the rest of the season is very, very much up in the air. But this is a gigantic game. This is the squad that has played every game this month, and they are doing so incredibly well. As again, from Bailey downward, we're trying, or really from Anderson downward, those are the guys we're either trying to loan, actually those are the guys we're trying to sell, the ones that we're trying to loan are still up above. And to be honest, it's a bit unfortunate because I would love to get Bailey into the lineup and I feel like the best I can do is put him on the bench in favor of Weber because I am not willing to change up this starting lineup and Bailey will end up getting playing time here in that FA Cup match against Wofford. So let's see what we can do here. Can we cap off an undefeated month and, I mean, think about what this game could mean we could potentially be first, top of the league, by the end of this game. Let's see what happens. Will it be a happy New Year's? Isco scores in the 11th minute. We'll stay with this. I'm hoping for a draw, at the very least, to go on the road and at least pick up a point would be massive for us. Can we get a goal is the question. Moritz Meyer is on for Mont and Don. 15 minutes left. Manolas, red card. Isco scores again. And Meyer gets hurt. And Man City takes it 2-0. Our good run of form has come to an end. I mean, still, we're in a very good run of form. But that is a big-time point swing. I'm not sure where we will be in the league now. As we have a lot to get to here. So Morales has left as planned. Guzman, Prado, Miranda, Tabucci, DeGraff, and Bello are all out on loan. We also get a transfer off for Bayern Munich in for Ove Anderson. He deserves a club of that stature. He really does. It might be a risk, but like I said, I'd rather just sell him now than essentially hold him hostage because that's all we'd be doing. I'm going to let him go. And we have the replacements with Villalaba and Fuentes, Zahner as well. That can replace him. Meyer is out for six weeks with a torn hamstring. That is going to push Kelly and probably Breen into the limelight. We're going to have to look to recall Breen here in a moment, which we'll actually be able to. So Fausto Ponce is on the way out. Vera is on the way out of the Youth Academy. Anybody else here? Cardenas also going to be gone. Galliano can stay. 
41 overall at 15. That's a tough one. The rest can stay. So we have seven players in the Youth Academy right now. As far as the roster is concerned, it's going to be very interesting to see who plays that game for us against Watford. And as mentioned, I just want to say Watford one more time, of course. As mentioned, we still need to see what's going on with the right back situation where Lund, of course, showing great potential. Roldan, though, is exciting. And for that, Roldan will be staying as our third choice right back. Lund is going to be sold alongside Kovac, which is unfortunate. So Roldan, we're going to put on the loan list. Kovac's already on the transfer list, and Thomas Lund will also be on the transfer list. So again, for those who don't know, it goes great, exciting, special in terms of the, you know, the weakest to best in terms of potential. So Lund will hopefully be going. Johannesson stays. Kovacs going. Roldan stays. He can go out on loan if needed. And of course, we are set up there. In terms of the center backs, we are still trying to sell Diaz. Aside from that, everything else is good to go, including us, of course, training up Anthony Williams, as you would have seen. In terms of CDMs, again, hopefully Bailey ends up going out to Fiorentina. That would be a decent move for us. We're still trying to sell Kude. And as far as anybody else is concerned, I think we are good. I think we're good. I'm very intrigued at how good Prado is, but we can wait. It's not an extreme necessity to immediately recall him. We are freeing up spots, of course, but I think we're good for the moment. Although I really do want to know how good Prado and Bello are. I might recall them, but I do want to continue to free up some spots on the roster before we do that. So, Kude's fine. Zahner's good. Anderson, hopefully, we can see leave the club for his sake. And with Gil Luna, am I going to be able to see how good he is right now? Exciting. Exciting for Luna. I actually already knew that. I have that down in ye old Word documents. So it's a shame that Moritz Meyer ended up getting injured. I'm not going to recall Breen at the moment. And of course, DeGroff and Tabucci are also out. Uh, we also loaned out Joaquin Guzman to Crystal Palace. So we still don't have all the answers for everybody, but we at least have that situation figured out for the left back log jam that we had there. Actually, the right back log jam, in fairness. We should have scouting reports back. Bailey has been sold. He is off to Fiorentina. So another relatively long-term member of the club is gone, but he's just been jumped. It had to happen. And Lazio is interested in Villalaba, the left back. See if we can send him out on loan. Recall him if we ever get into a bit more injury trouble. Sean Bailey, it was nice knowing you, though. And we're not going to have any updates there, so... We need to put together a second team. I'm going to stay live for this game, quote-unquote live. We're not going to change anything up. So let's see what this squad's going to look like. I'm honestly not sure with a couple of the injuries that we're dealing with, outside of the fact that, of course, Grinero will be out. Meyer steps in. Johannesson is going to be the starting right back. Center backs are going to be Bailey and Weber. Very intrigued to see how these two can do. Bailey and Weber are in. Williams will be on the bench. And the left back for this game is going to be Richardson. Richardson. Congratulations. So again, we're trying to sell Lund via Lava, potentially going out on loan. So Roldan will be taking a spot on the bench for this game. We'll see if he gets any playing time. CDMs for this game are going with Cano and Diaby. So we'll probably play Cano in a little bit more of an attacking role, and Diaby will get a chance. Actually, he was a bit better offensively. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll play Cano as more of a more of a defensive setup, and on the bench will be Miranda. Congratulations to Miranda. He's up to a 62. He's making some decent progress. It's not that bad. The attackers in this situation: Berezovsky and Romero, both of whom are normally right there on the bench. The replacements, De Groot, and whoever else. <laughs> I'm not really sure due to the injuries that we have going on right now. Uh, I might I might go with Villalaba. 
have him play in the Anderson role. And of course, right now we don't want to risk Anderson getting hurt and potentially causing issues with a certain transfer. And as far as the attackers are concerned, it's a little bit weaker than expected, but it's going to be Kelly and it's going to be Luna up top, meaning Duarte and Montendon will be on the bench. The injury to Meyer and the lack of a recall of Breen kind of hurts the attacking setup there. But hopefully this squad is good enough to beat Watford. I have my doubts, but time will tell. Time will tell. It would be a big win for them, even if it is a weaker squad than we'd normally see for that second team. But again, if they want more playing time, play your hearts out. Third round home game against Watford. Can I get a Watford counter? They're in, uh, they're in hit or miss form. They just beat Chelsea, though. I'm going to sim this. 3-2-1. Yes! Jonathan Kelly. Lone goal in the eighth minute. And the second team gets a very, very big win. And, you know, despite the stumble at the end of December, this run we have been on continues... We're looking very, very good as these five, again, will continue to be the ones that we focus upon. With Duarte, I mean, the dribbling and ball control doesn't need that much more work, but desperate to get the stamina up for him, even though it will go up naturally with him being one of our first-choice guys. Kennedy in Chile, what do you got for us? The answer is nothing at the moment. I need to see 80s for the low end at this point. 74-94. For Benarbia is pretty good. I'm still going to say no. That's not good enough. Uh, nor is Clucci in, of course, this batch of Moroccan talent. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, is a 78 high enough? A 74 to 94. 71, 91, but a, 70, a 78. I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off, I think. I want to see... If that drops, there is some very good talent out of that scouting report in Morocco, but no one who's absolutely can't miss, especially with the talent that we already have on roster and the talent that we already have in the Youth Academy. I don't think I'm going to be signing a single player there, which is absolutely crazy because there is some good talent, but again, we have to be even more strict and selective than we have ever been. So as of January 4th, we find ourselves in fourth place in the league table. Three points clear of Leicester and Liverpool. Three points back of Spurs and Man City. Not a bad place to be. Ireland, no thank you. Again, we'll get to international duty later on. $11 million for Thomas Lund. That would be a fair offer. I Again, I like the way his attributes are set up for a right back and potentially a CDM. But considering we're not playing the games, that is not necessary to keep him. Apparently, our match against Burnley has been rescheduled, which is fine. I think I want to stay live, and there it is. Ovi Anderson is gone in what might be in what might be viewed Oh, wow, a couple of moves here. That might be viewed as a huge mistake. You look at the, you know, the selling of Roberts two seasons ago, that could have been viewed as a mistake. But, again, I feel justified in my reasoning. The right-hand side, yes, I could play a left-hand side guy there, but that's not how we decided to do it. It's a matter of keeping players with their natural list of position, even if it doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense for their attributes. But uh, rather, than holding, uh, rather than holding Anderson hostage, it makes sense to let him go. He gets a move to a big-time club. He goes to Bayern Munich for nearly $38 million. Ovi, thank you. It sucks that you're gone, but it had to be done. Moving on to other business, Bournemouth have paid the $41.5 million release clause for Dragasevic. I was hoping to prevent Dragasevic from staying in the Premier League. That is not going to happen if that move goes through. Uh, Cristobal Villalaba has been loaned out to Lazio. A couple of big time moves here, which is why I wanted to stay alive with this, because I expect more moves to go down as Bayer Leverkusen have also paid the release clause for Dragasevic. All right, there's competition between Bournemouth and Leverkusen. I'd prefer him to go to Leverkusen. And there's also a transfer offer for Roldan. Barcelona, get the hell out of here. He is not for sale. 
He is not for sale. You can loan him if you want. He is not for sale. And with them wanting to outright purchase his rights, I can only assume he's going to be that good. Uh, as Dragosavich will not be going to Bournemouth, which is huge for us. Lund has been sold to Sampdoria. So, Lund, it was it was nice knowing you, buddy. But you got jumped by Roldan. There's a transfer offer for Simon Kovac from a Dutch team, a, if I'm not mistaken, which I don't believe I am. And there is a move for Diaz, the extra center back. We'll see if that goes through. The Ecuadorian hasn't been here for all that long. He's not overly needed. So we have this match here against Burnley. The only move that we have to make is putting Luna, or potentially, I'm going to go with Villalaba, onto the bench rather than having an injured Moritz Meyer there. Aside from that, the roster is full strength, which is nice. So we are good to go. Again, this is the team outside of that loss to Man City that has been on a tremendous run of form as of late. And we will see if that continues. Taking on Burnley, who have lost, at the very least, their last three games, including an upset loss to Bristol City. Let's hope we can get the win here. Let's sim this. 3-2-1. That is not the game to drop points. We end up getting a draw at least. A point is a point. And as we have seen, especially last season, every point matters. But that's that's rough. We lose a little bit of ground on Man City, who are now five points clear. And we're only one point clear of Liverpool. But we hold in a top four spot with 18 games remaining in the Premier League season. As Williams is already up to a 67, which is very nice. I'd like to get him up to a 70 by season's end. But that, that game against Burnley, as nice as it was to beat Arsenal and draw Spurs, you know, and to get some points out of that, I think you can't really lose a game to Burnley and say, oh, yeah, no, you know, we deserve top five. That's, that's a bad spot. Dragasevich is gone. He's going to Germany with Bayer Leverkusen for $41.5 million. Nemanja, thank you. You were great for us early on. But he had to go as well, passed by Graniero as some long-term members. I mean, Dragasevich is gone, Anderson is gone, and that seems crazy to sell these guys when we're currently in fourth place and these are better players, but long-term, it makes sense to do this, of course. So we get a loan offer for Gil Chiesta. We'll see if that will go through. Hopefully it will, one of the Ecuadorians that we're keeping. As Kovac just refuses to leave. Meyer, that is that is your spot. <laughs> that was your spot before he was sold. And oh god, we get to play Everton next. They are in second, three points clear. This is a massive game to rebound off of that disappointing result against Burnley. We need a win here, especially if we want to stay ahead of Liverpool and Leicester. The lineup will pretty much be the same. Wright being in good form prevents him from being taken out for Bailey. And that is basically the only reason. But aside from that, we are good to go. Let's do this as we're still looking to sell Sanchez, Kude, Diaz, and Kovac. If they don't sell, we'll look to use them for the rest of the year. Let's see what happens. We need a win. They're coming off of a 3-1 win against Spurs as well. We're on the road, ideally. It would be a draw. I don't even know if I can hope for that. They have some prime time talent in that lineup too, although Zobnin gets hurt. Christian Pulisic is there. Henry Onyakaru. It's ridiculous. Onyakuru, I should say. I was never good with that name. I also missed Duarte's penalty goal. So there we go. And then Amiri tied it. I'd be fine if this score holds for the next 25 minutes. That would be great. Oh boy, 10 minutes left. Just hold on. Get a draw. Please just get the draw. I will take that every day of the week. Very upset about losing points to Burnley, but getting a point against Everton, getting a point against Spurs, we weren't able to get anything against Man City. That is huge for us. Still a 66 rating for the board, but I'm happy with where we are right now. And again, that pressure's on to finish top five to get the board off of our back after... A little bit of a struggle early on, mainly in terms of some of the other goals that we were looking to accomplish. 
We are at least going to get through January before we either jump forward again or consider calling it an episode. We have an FA Cup match against Southampton coming up. And an update as far as the mailbox is concerned. It is an offer for Horatio Sanchez. Not from PSG, but from Monaco. Still in the same league, of course, for just under $24 million. Horatio, same thing. Solid player. You've been here for a while, but you have been jumped in terms of the priority list on the depth chart. And by the time the winger situation is completely sorted... It's going to be too late. So, and he's tried to force his way out of the club before too. Better to just let him go. At least I feel. And we also get a loan offer for Zuabri. Please go to Turkey, sir. That would be great. Get you some playing time, hopefully. Because we have this match against Southampton. I do want to take a look at what's coming after this. And we play Man City again. Oh, God. Oh, boy, that's a rough one. And then we play Swansea on deadline day. Whew, that is, that is a rough schedule. It has to be second team here, first team against City, second team against Swansea, more than likely, or a mixed squad in that other game. So we are, again, going to make up a new team sheet fairly quick and easy. Uh, but with some of the moves that have been made and everything, some loan offers as well, we're just going to go from this setup here. So again, Graniero will take a seat in favor of Meyer. As far as the right-back situation is concerned, that is one Johannesson. Bailey will be in at center-back next to Weber. And the left-back will be Richardson, which means the other bench players are no longer... O'Leary and Wright. It is going to be Williams, of course, and Roldan, who has yet to be loaned out. The defensive options, of course, Cano and Diaby will make it into this lineup. Again, happy for Diaby to get some playing time here. He's up to a 70 already, which is pretty ridiculous, I have to admit. Miranda will get a spot on the bench. As far as the attackers are concerned, of course, De Groot will end up being on the bench, actually. We're going to have Romero there and Berezovsky, the attackers. I think, again, I'm going to have Luna up front with Kelly. Makes sense to do it that way. So we're going to have Duarte and Montendon on the bench. And aside from that, I think I think we're good with Villalaba there. So that Kiesta, yeah, we're good. It's just Villalaba on the bench. So that is going to be the team... For this game, of course, they were able to pick up a win in their previous FA Cup attempt. Let's see what they can do this time against Southampton. Hopefully have us, you know, trending in the right direction. Bit of a positive note before that just absolutely gigantic rematch against Man City. Cannot underestimate or, you know, yeah, well, under no, underestimate. Cannot understate how important of a game that is. Big chance here for the second team. Angus Gunn between the sticks. Vestergaard's still there. Kevin Volland is in. We need this win. We need it. I'm going to stay live with it, I suppose. We're almost to halftime. We hit halftime. Still deadlocked. No score for either team. Montendon is on for Luna. Hopefully he's back to full fitness for the Man City game. Gabriel scores, or Gabriel perhaps. Is that going to be it? Yes, it is. Southampton knock us out of the FA Cup. A 1-0 victory. Nothing doing there offensively for us, unfortunately. And again, as far as how often the second team gets to play now, how, you know, or at least the individual members of the second team, I don't know. Time will tell. Time will tell. It's going to be interesting, I'd say, just to see how that all plays out. I know we're not on track. I know, I know. Give me time, please. You've given me time already, but give me more time. Yeah, Jay, you sat out one game. God forbid. God forbid you sat out one game. I can afford to sell you, okay? So, shut it. We are fifth in the league table. Horatio Sanchez has been sold to AS Monaco. Another long-term member of the team is gone, unfortunately. We get another transfer offer for Roldan. 
which again, last episode I felt like that I accidentally put him on the transfer list. I know I didn't, just for whatever reason. Team's like, hey, we want to buy him. It's not going to happen, guys. It's not going to happen. He's not going anywhere. Oh, boy, playing the league leaders just before the deadline. And, yeah, that second team's going to have to play again, which is nuts. Absolutely nuts. Montendon wants in, which is understandable, and he doesn't have to worry. He's in. Our rating's down to a 62. We need a big-time performance, a big-time effort. It's the home leg against City. Can we at least walk away with a point? Manolas gets hurt and is outright taken out of the game a minute in. Medved scores, and Leroy Sané ties it eight minutes later. Didn't expect the goal at all from Medved. That's crazy. The Manolas injury is huge for us, though. Oh, boy. Half an hour left. Can the score hold? Altonen. Altonen. Sané scores again. Just hold on for ten minutes. Please. Please get this point. I'll take it. We let the lead slip twice, but we do manage to take a point away from the league leaders, and for that, I view that game as a success, again, even if we blew the lead twice. That is a big-time performance from the squad. I mean, it's, it's Leroy Sané in 2026. You can imagine, knowing that he has one of the highest potential ratings in the game, how good he is at this point. I'm not worried about other players leaving for other youth academies. That's fine by me. We are going to have to play Swansea here before deadline day is underway. And again, it will be the second team that's given the opportunity. Moritz Meyer not quite back to 100%, which is unfortunate. Again, I might have to recall Breen here sooner rather than later, but... I think, at least for this season, I don't want to recall DeGroff and Tabucci either. With the amount of players that we've sold already, there's not that extreme amount of pressure to get rid of players in case we have to sign someone from the Youth Academy. So I feel like we're okay for now. Big game here against Swansea. who are back in the Premier League. Can we get this win as we approach halftime? No goals to speak of yet. Is there a goal to be had? Soro scores. Former Sunderland striker. 15 minutes left. Can we get a goal? Or are we going to drop points to Swansea Montendon in the 88th? Whew. Jan Montendon with what could be the most important goal of our season. We at least pick up a point against Swansea. I mean, again, our grade does drop as we are now out of the top five. Unfortunately, January wasn't all that kind to us. We're now nine points back of City, but I'm not worried about City. I'm worried about that fifth place spot, and we're only behind Chelsea on goal differential. We're in a decent spot, but it is a very close race, and for once, we're not way down there. But case in point, we just barely drew the team that's second bottom in the league table. That is a massive problem. Call you know, call out the issues for whatever they may be, just the team underperforming. Of course, that was the second team. It wasn't ideal. Still, though, our second team barely able to beat Swansea. It's a little bit concerning, but of course, we're not really going to have to worry about them for that much longer as we are out of every tournament. <laughs> so there's that. Oh, man. Sixth place. Sixth place as of deadline day. We started the episode in sixth. We end the episode in sixth once we get through the final few hours of deadline day. I'm not expecting any other big moves to go through here at this point. It's not looking too likely, which means the roster that we have is the roster that is staying. The good thing is that we don't have too many players, if any, that we were wanting to sell, I think Kude and Diaz, maybe Kovac as well. I think we have three players left that I wanted to get rid of, and we got rid of the majority of them, so that works. But I think the big thing here, still staying competitive, but getting rid of the likes of Anderson, letting Sanchez walk as well. How will those moves affect the team? We get a loan offer for Zuabri from the New England Revolution. The second of the window closes, so there's no way that's going to go through. 
which isn't surprising. Medved, you've... I hate this game sometimes. <laughs> I really do. It's like, yeah, we're just going to bother you with an email for no reason whatsoever. Uh, Duarte, let's at least get that stamina up to a 64, man. It's taken forever. I know it's a bronze training skill, but... Or a training session, but still. I'll probably rework those. Maybe find a gold or whatever. Although I don't think there... Is there a gold with stamina? I'm not sure. It's fine, though. Not too worried. I do want to see our scouting reports before we call it a day. Let's see what we have. Venezuela, no thank you. Tournament money, 200k. And we have our final few reports here. In Chile, what do we have? What do we have? Is there anybody of extreme importance? Ishmael Miranda, I'm going to say no to. Ramon Galliano, can't hurt to sign him. Can't hurt to sign him. Gregorio Diaz, can't really hurt to sign him either, i got to be honest. Uh, Segura, same thing, bring him in for now. Thank you very much, Chile. Uh, for the Moroccans, it would be Moroccans, wouldn't it? <laughs> the 88-77-94, Ibrahim Kluci will, in fact, be signed up. I'm going to try to bring in both of these guys as well. We have the space right now after not going too crazy with our signings. Uh, Tahir, Tahir, perhaps, will definitely be signed. Saeed Saber, Saber, perhaps. Not going to sign you, though, unfortunately. And the other, Saeed Kluci, 68 to a 92. Maybe? Take me to the Youth Academy. Is there anybody who's, you know, an easy selection to get rid of here? Carvajal, unfortunately. I swear to God, menu lag in EA Sports titles is going to be the death of me as we accidentally signed him. Alfonso Bello is going to be released. I'm going to have to go and immediately find that player and then immediately release him. So that's great. Thanks, game. And the final deal here, 75 to a 91, that's going to drop. That is absolutely going to drop. 72 to a 92. For Zuabri, 73 to a 94. I can't see potentials like that and not want to sign the players. Even a 77 to a 94. I can't see potentials like that and not want to sign these guys. But I'm going to hold off. We need those higher rated. We need those higher rated players and the higher rated players only. So let's go release Benjamin Carvajal. <laughs> we signed him for all of 15 minutes. Sorry, buddy, but... That's what happens when the game just ignores button inputs. So, Mr. Carvajal, thank you for thank you for joining. But, uh, yeah, you got good work rates. Maybe someone will sign you. And goodbye. You're welcome for wasting 30K. Bored. That's what you get. That is what you get. So, to set up where we are going next, we did not reach the quarterfinal of the FA Cup. We need to finish in the top five spot, or I... I'm in a lot of trouble. Of course, we finished up scouting South America. We are very much right now focused on Africa. Morocco and Algeria are done. Andrew Kennedy is off to Egypt. Please find us the next Salah. And as far as the rest of Africa is concerned, we're going to work our way down the coast. Uh, the Ivory Coast is the first location. Cote d'Ivoire. And it is Ghana. So there you go. Our African excursion begins. And as far as how the rest of this season is going to go, I'm not entirely sure. Again, sixth place behind I mean, pretty much the big boys of the league. City, Spurs, Liverpool, Chelsea, and Everton have been good throughout the course of this. <clears throat> Still hesitant to call them a big club, but, you know, that's okay. United up there, Leicester, Arsenal. I mean, we are, what? <laughs> I mean, four points ahead of ninth place Arsenal. It's a close race. And it could be just a tad bit, a tad bit scary and dramatic and nerve-wracking down the stretch. Our grade hasn't dropped that far, but I am still worried that if this goes poorly, that board rating can plummet, and we might find the end of this series a little bit prematurely than what I was hoping it would be. In the next episode, though, we hopefully wrap up this season. We start February against Watford, we end up playing Palace, Bournemouth, and we have a huge game against Liverpool. So really, the only team I'm worried about there is Liverpool. We need to win 
against the other three teams, bottom line. March is also a bit of a scary month against United and Leicester, but we do have a winnable game against Southampton in April. Forest needs to be a win. Arsenal's a tough game, but Newcastle and Wolves, we need points from those games. And in May, West Ham and Stoke, hopefully we can get points from those games, but Spurs and Chelsea, those are going to be very tough opponents. Do we have what it takes to finish in a top five spot for the very first time? Do we have the... <laughs> the more beneficial schedule to accomplish just that, I think we do. It's just a matter of whether or not that ends up being the case. We are done here for now. I thank you guys, of course, for still supporting and enjoying this series. I am not in any way giving up on this anytime soon. I still want to win the Premier League, even though we're just now, after that setback, finding our footing in this league. I am still very much addicted to this series and I'm excited to see what happens in this next episode. Again, hopefully we do end up finishing this season. And hopefully, <coughs> Graniero, you can, uh, you can stay healthy. We can all stay healthy. Hooray to health. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have a good one.